Every good thing you can name in your life has come from the Lord. Right. He watches over you. He thinks about you constantly. If he had somebody's picture on his nightstand, it would be you. He's counted the hairs on your head. He knows all the plans that he has for you. He just longs for you to plug in. Plug in. Get his word. Get his message. Glorify God by the way you live your life. You know, before you get mad, before you say something that you can't take back, stop and say a prayer. Stop and ask God to take control of your mouth. Take control of your eyes. Take control of your ears. Shut off the things, the sin that so easily entangles us. We all have a problem with that. But we have a God who isn't way out there. We have a God that envelops us. We live and move and have our being in the presence of God. He is right here with us. All you have to do is call out to him. Let him take control of your life. And your life will have an abundance of peace, an abundance of joy. You will not be able to contain all that God wants to do in your life. Your life will overflow into other people's lives as they ask you what you have that they haven't found yet. And you tell them, I have Jesus Christ. He lives in me to live through me. And my part is to say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Because our salvation is a completed work of Jesus Christ. He sought you, he bought you, he lives in you, to live through you, to see you all the way down the straight and narrow path. And will there be most people on that path? No. You're going to be going against the flow, but that's all right. Just like that old salmon swimming in that stream up against the current, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. He's no respecter of persons. You're just as important as anybody else is in the world to the Lord. He loves you. He made you. He has plans for you. Okay, today we are in Romans chapter 13. And most of us know this by heart, but it's always good to be reminded of Romans chapter 13. It talks about the different institutions that God has ordained and given authority over our lives. Does anybody know the three main institutions God laid out? Tell me. Government, marriage, church. Government, the home, and the church. Amen. Very good. So that's exactly the yeah, same thing, though, what you said. That's right. So, first of all, the family. The family. What has happened to the family unit in America? Man, Satan has taken a hammer to the family unit. And he has beaten the thunder out of our family. Families break up. Families can't get along. The husband and wife and children is no longer a majority in America. It is a minority. What we have is, unfortunately, we have man and man, woman and man, couples that just don't even get married anymore. They just live together. And we have a mess. God ordained the family. God established the family with who? Adam and Eve. And from that one family, God furnished the world with all the families that are in the earth. And God laid out boundaries for each country. Now, if our family is messed up, that's all right. God forgives and God restores and God blesses us wherever we're at. The main thing we want to do is be sure that our families are surrendered to the Lord. And if your husband won't come along, you come along anyway. You know, keep, we will keep praying. And we need to get our prayer tree up. And we need to put 
all of our loved ones that don't know the Lord on our prayer tree. And we need to pray for them all the time because there is a spiritual war raging in America. And the one that will win in your life is the one you feed the most. Do you listen to the television the most or do you listen to the Lord the most? You know, whatever you feed will grow in you. That's why every day you need to be in the Word. And if you're not a good reader, that's okay. Listen to preaching on the radio. That is still just as good as reading the Word, even though probably reading the Word might be a little better. But listening (laughs) is what I do more of. I listen to preaching. I love listening to preachers preach because I get more insight into what the Word of God is saying. And that may be you too. We're all stimulated in different ways. The main thing is that we dig into God. So God established the family, the government, and the church. And all of the governing authorities are under attack today. Look at the rebellion we see in our society. No longer do they want to listen to the governing authorities. They attack them. They rebel against them. No longer do they listen to mom and dad at home if there is a mom and dad at home. They rebel against them. Whatever authorities are in our society. Well, we have teachers at school, principals. We have, who else? Policemen. We have government authorities. We have mayors. We have precinct chairmen. We have all kinds of governing authorities. And yet, many times we rebel against them today. Let's spend a little time looking at what God says. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And those which exist are established by God. Now, what in the world is he saying there? He's saying God is sovereign. You know, you can't put God in a box and tell God what to do. God will choose those that he wants to have in authority. Now, stop and think about this. Who was the authority back in the day of Jesus? Roman Caesar. Caesar was in authority. Now, is he a good guy or a bad guy? Not real good compared to what we got today. But God chose that person. And God used that person. Why does God establish governmental authorities? To keep us from rolling into anarchy. Do we have evil people in our society? Yes, we do. Boy, do we ever. And we need people to get stuck in jail. We need, hold on, capital punishment. Capital punishment. Because there are some people that are so rebellious and so full of the devil and have done such heinous acts that they deserve to be put to death. And God gives government the authority of the sword to put people to death. Now, that's not our first choice. It's a last choice. But sometimes it's an only choice. These people that will kill little kids and do wicked, heinous things in our society need to be dealt with. We need to love them. We need to pray for them. But they need the judgment of governmental authorities because that's the way God ordained it. Look at what it says. It says, so there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Now, am I saying that Joe Biden was chosen by God? (laughs) Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Now, you all know, he wasn't my choice, (laughs) but he was God's choice. So, you know what? I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to intercede in his behalf. I want to pray that God opens his heart and gives him wisdom and directs him because that's what God says to do. 
That's what God says to do. Therefore, verse 2, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God. And they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. Now, there is an exception to opposing authority. When they go against the authority of God's word, then what do we choose? We choose God's word, we choose God's way. So, I'll just use this as an example. Abortion. Abortion. God says he hates the hands that shed innocent blood. So, we should stand against the heinous act of abortion. Right. Nobody has the right to kill a precious little baby in a mother's womb. You know what? The least that can happen is that mother to have that baby and give it to someone else that can adopt that baby and raise that child. We have to stand against evil. If we don't, what's going to happen? If evil, if good men do nothing, evil prevails. We are called to be salt and light. We are called to speak forth the righteousness of God. God's word is true. God's word is wisdom. God's word is the way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man's going to come to the Father except by him. And we are the only Bible that some people are going to look at. If we don't stand up and speak up, what good are we? We're not good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. We need to go to the city council meetings where they're trying to open liquor stores in Bridgeport, or they're trying to open a new bar. And we need to stand up and speak up and speak against those different evil establishments that we know won't bless people, it'll just drive them down the other way. So we need to be salt and light in our community. And I know some of us might not disagree, might not agree with that, but that's the way I read scripture, that we have to stand up and be salt and light. Because there are things that will drive us closer to the devil than closer to the Lord. Now, then we read down. So, therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. Now, why do we have governmental authorities, believe it or not? They are a minister to us for good. So, you know, we tend to think about taxes and things that we don't like, but I do like it when I call 911 and a policeman shows up. Do you? I do like it when my neighbors are tearing apart their house and they're moving towards my house that somebody comes out to help. We need governing authorities because we live in a society to where there are more people that are seeking to do evil than are seeking to do good. And if you don't believe that, I know news focuses on those that do wrong. But I tell you what, you watch a little bit of news and it goes a long way, don't it? It is so much heartache and heartbreak that goes on around us as a society. And I wish I could tell you it's going to get better. But it's not going to get better. You know, it talks about the last days. We are rapidly in the last days. We are getting close to the return of Christ. How do I know that? It says before Christ returns, there will be a great falling away. Well, go and look on the internet at apostate churches, what they are teaching today. They are ear ticklers. All they want to do is fill up all of their pews so they can make more money. They don't really care about preaching the truth of God's word. 
You know what? When you preach the truth of God's word, it's going to step on your toes. It's going to offend you. It's going to hurt you. It's going to make you mad. But brothers and sisters, that's what we need. We need the truth that God alone will give us. And that's why I like preaching through books. Because sometimes you can skip around the Bible and you never hit on anything that bothers anybody. Well, that's not preaching. <laughs> preaching is going verse by verse through the Word of God so that you are offended and can look at what you're doing. Satan don't want you free and happy. Satan wants you in bondage. He dangles things in front of you to get you off track, to get you tangled up in sin, and to make your life a living hell on earth. Amen. How many of us have experienced that? Yeah, all of us. We all have. And listen, if you'll follow the word of God, if you'll stay on the narrow path, you will bless yourself and your family and your children and your children's children. But if you don't, get ready for misery because that's what the world has to offer you. Sheer deep misery. And you know what? If you want misery, go to a funeral of somebody that's lost. Oh, my goodness. You know what the difference is? Night and day. A Christian's funeral or somebody that's lost. You know, I've been to funerals where we know they're lost and preachers will say all these glossy, glowing things over them. You know what? They don't change a thing. They are still in hell. And Misery. it's forever. Yeah. It's forever. We don't want anybody to go to hell. We want people to have life now and abundant life. That's what Jesus came to give us. Life now and abundant life and eternal life that is filled with joy and satisfaction and purpose. You know, there's no greater purpose than walking in the Word of God. You know where you're going. You don't know when you're going to get there, but you know that God has appointments for you all along the way. People you work with need the Lord. People in your family need the Lord. People in our community need the Lord. And we're going to go if this COVID thing ever dries up. And we're going to start hitting house after house after house and inviting them to church because that's what we're about. We are the family of God here in Balzora. And we are going to reach our community. And we are going to grow as a church family because God has planted us here for a purpose. He has a plan. And it's good. It's good. We just have to listen and walk in it. And then it goes on and says, verse 3, For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good. And you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, what? Be afraid. For it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of God, an avenger, who brings wrath on those who practice evil. Now, what does it mean they don't bear the sword for nothing? In other words, God ordained government and gave them the authority to take life of those that are so wicked and heinous and evil in society and will not be redeemed, will not allow God to touch their heart and transform them. We have a good legal system up to a certain point. We do know that poor people and rich people get different treatment in our society. And politicians get different treatment in our society. They will pass laws that pertain to all of us little people but doesn't pertain to them. There is something wrong with that. You know what? I'm just gonna, this is just a remark from Sonny Smith. <laughs> we need to vote them rascals out of office. Amen. We need to clean out Washington, D.C. 
It has become a cesspool. Mm -hmm. It has become a sewer. It is governed by the almighty dollar. We need good, godly men and women to go to Washington that believe in the word of God, will stand on the word of God, will walk in the word of God, and will transform our government that truly cares and blesses and benefits people. And you know, if any of you feel an inkling to run for Congress, our church will support you. <laughs> we will support you because we need Christians in our government. Amen? Yeah. We do. There's no doubt. For verse 4, for it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. Verse 5, therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Like I said, if you want to be blessed, submit to the governing authorities. When the policeman pulls you over, be nice. Be polite. If he gives you a ticket, he gives you a ticket. Say thank you and go on and fight it in court if you want to. But I'm telling you, raising up and getting mad will get you nothing but trouble. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, and I've known through the years, I should have got a lot more tickets than I got. But the grace of God has been on me, and I've gotten out of a few, which I deserve, to be honest with you. I'm just being honest with you. But you know what? You get a lot more with honey than you do with vinegar. If you're polite to the policeman when he walks up, you have a better chance of not having a ticket. So that's the way to go. Maybe a warning. Yeah, maybe a warning, and I've got a few warnings, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we all need, you know what? We all make mistakes. And policemen, they don't all like giving tickets because it's a lot of paperwork for them. But we need to be obedient to the governing authorities. The school teacher that gives Susie an F, be nice to her. Talk respectfully to her. She is the governing authority in that classroom. God has placed them there. Now, have I seen bad school teachers? Yes, I have. But you still get far ahead more if you're polite and nice to people. We don't want to let Satan rear up in us and us say ugly things to teachers that bring them down. We want to show respect. Respect for police, respect for teachers, respect for those in authority, amen? That's what the Word of God teaches. You will be far ahead of the general crowd if you will do that. That may not agree with everything the government does or the police does or whoever does, but ultimately God has placed them in authority for a reason. And then it says, verse uh, 6, For because of this you also pay taxes, for rulers are servants of God, devoting themselves to this very thing. Render to all what is due them, tax to whom taxes do, Custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So God lays it out pretty clearly how we're to react. And you know what? You have a choice. Next time you get pulled over, you can be mean, you can be grumpy, you can cuss at the cop, and you know what? It's going to go far worse for you if you do that than if you say a quick prayer, Lord, Remove this anger from me. Lord, give me a peaceful heart. Help me to respond with respect. Thank you in Jesus' name. You can say that before that policeman leaves his car and gets up to your window. Do it. Do Wait, it. doesn't make any sense, though. Why would you get mad? Because the cop's pulling you over. Because you feel like I mean, fear. I mean, it's called if you're fear. doing something wrong. Right. I mean, you're getting pulled over. Right. I mean, it you deserve it, don't you? It doesn't make much sense yeah, to be getting upset about it. My dad used I didn't. I, my dad used I to hate policemen. I never will I've forget the time over. my Nobody dad got pulled something. over. <laughs> the policeman came up to the window. My dad said a few choice words to him. He got the ticket. He peeled out. And the gravel from the side of the oh, road no. went on the police car. He got pulled over again. He got another ticket. <laughs> you know what? You can learn if you watch 
Watch your parents. Watch your parents. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to happen. Let's have a word for it. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for teaching us the way to live. And Lord, it gets down to the very nuts and bolts of what we do every day. Help us, Lord, to be submissive to those in authority, knowing that you have placed them there for our good. Lord, help us to walk in obedience to your word, because that's where the joy is at. That's where the peace is at. That's where the satisfaction is at in the Christian life. And Lord, you know every heart, you know every need today in our congregation. Lord, if any are lost and they don't know whether or not they go to heaven, help them by faith to step out and walk down the aisle and surrender their life to you. Lord, maybe there's Christians that are in bondage to sin and they don't know how to get out of that habit. Lord, help them by faith to step out and let us pray for them that they might be set free. Lord, whatever your will is, we give you this invitation to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.